Hey, what's up, guys? This is John from the Undercover Brony, and I am here with another individual that is up and coming within the Brony fandom, Quantum Hippologist. How are you today? I'm I'm pretty good. Yeah, gotta say, uh, just doing doing as well as I can. Well, there you go. So the first question I have for you, I ask everyone this because it's such a fun question. But what is your Brony story? How did you get into the fandom? Ooh, uh, okay. It was definitely definitely in the fourth grade. Which I was like, what, nine at the time? Mm-hmm. So I think it was like towards the end of season three or like mm-hmm. somewhere in season three. I remember watching Friendship is Witchcraft. Uh, that's one of the most prominent things that I remember. I rem- I don't I never understood the jokes because, you know, revisiting Friendship is Witchcraft now. Uh, G- Jesus Christ. But <laughs> Friendship is Witchcraft is what got me into into my little pony. And then I I, I was like a brony throughout the fourth grade, sort of stopped in the fifth grade. And then uh, in 2021, at the beginning of 2021, mm-hmm. I got back into My Little Pony uh, because it was on Netflix. I just decided, you know, why not? So I just watched all. I binged all of it, and um, yeah, uh, it was, uh, it's a it's a very good show. Yes, indeed, that's very interesting. Um, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people have gotten into it due to having the exposure on Netflix, and with G5 now being on Netflix, it's bringing more traffic over there as well but i'm super fortunate because like i didn't know g5 was going to be a thing like i i entered into the fandom completely ignorant to um to g5 but like by the time i was finished with the series i was like oh dang there's going to be a movie coming out that's that's pretty cool yeah i i've been in the the fandom quite a bit longer i've been in it since uh, now it's been a little over 10 years which is crazy to think coming from someone who was there at the beginning not nowhere near the middle and definitely towards the end that's that's pretty wild yeah Uh, so my next question for you is what programs and equipment do you use for your recording and editing okay uh for editing i have um movavi 2020 it's it's all right it's it's fine it's not the best i'm looking to upgrade soon uh I have a HP Pavilion uh, X360 laptop. Uh, it's efficient enough. Sometimes it lags. For my uh, for my audio, I'm using a Shure SM uh, SM57 microphone. Uh, I don't have a pop filter, so what I did was I took one of the um, the soundproofing tiles that I use for my wall and just like rubber band it on top of it. So <laughs> it, it's it's all it's all very makeshift right now. But that's um that's basically yeah that's basically all I'm using. You know, work smarter, yeah. not harder. Yeah, ex- exactly. That I mean, it's not the best, but hey, it's uh, it's what I'm working with. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my next question is: Your videos go in depth with both the books and Equestria Girls. This is the first channel I've seen that is almost exclusively uh, from that sort of alternative media. Do you prefer Equestria Girls and the alternative media more than G4, or is it kind of similar in your eyes? That's an interesting question. Uh, I'd say more so similar because I. I really don't like separating Equestria Girls. It's 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 a very it, it's it's very different in a way, but it's still like you know mostly the same staff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And like uh, when it comes to like my channel and what it's tackling right now, I kind of want to stay far away from the main series as much as possible because you know there are tons of there are tons of channels with a decade of content about uh, My Little Pony Generation Four. Mm-hmm. So if if I'm going to talk about G Four at all, I'm I want it to be you know, more unique and more uh, alternative and tell people about what they might not know about. And I agree with that. You know, it, it makes your channel very unique. Uh, you you definitely handle a very niche part of the fandom. I know that there's other channels out there that have covered Equestria Girls and covered some of the, the comics and whatnot, um, but yours is very specialized in that aspect, so I do find that very unique. Uh, so my next question, uh, going along with uh, what I asked before, um, what do you find the most fascinating about the book and the comics versus the actual show? That's a really good question. The books, or the comics definitely lean towards the more, I wouldn't say mature, but definitely like they have a lot more references that kids wouldn't get. Like they're, they're, they're very, they're very comic. Like if that makes any sense, mm-hmm. like it, it, it leans fully into the nature of it being a comic that is sort of aimed at bronies, but is still sort is still sort of kid friendly. They're, they're writing the line a lot. Like it's very um Batman. It, it, yeah. It's very Batman. Like if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. And uh, the books, the books I just find to be like very, very nice supplementary material. Cause it, 
it's G4, but for people who just want a little bit more and don't like Pony Life. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I mean, it's it's very interesting because GM Barrow, who only did a couple episodes of the show, but was the main uh, writer for the books themselves, um, mm -hmm. now coming on to Generation 5 as one of the head writers, it's it's very fascinating to kind of see her career in that aspect, coming from the books to a little bit of D4 and now mainly heading up G5. It's, a, it's an interesting career path. Yeah, I think I think if anyone is to handle G five from G four, I'd I'd pick G I'd pick a uh, GM Barrow. Like she's she's definitely like the um uh the the OG, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. if she wrote the books, then she can write G five. Yeah, and I have to say, you know, some of her episodes from G four was great. Like uh, the point of no return, where Twilight has to I, uh, I doing love the, the point of no return. Yeah, you know, where Twilight has to, has to take out the overdue library book. And just the way that episode is structured and all the different places that Twilight and Spike go to, it's it's makes it a really fun episode. Yeah. I, I, I'd call that episode like Amending Fences 2.0 in the sense that like it's taking something from season one and bringing it into a into the current season. I would completely it's, agree with you on that. What was it? Her first episode. Um, The one where uh, Pinkie Pie knows. The one where Pinkie Pie knows. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, I remember when... Uh, when that episode came out and i remember reading the synopsis and i'm thinking you know what i bet it's that the secret is cadence and shining armor having a kid and when i did the review for the episode i'm just like called it <laughs> i'm uh, by the way i am on firm team uh you know it's okay that pink that we know what pinkie pie knew because you know if, if we didn't know then it'd be it, it it just be like a, a a weird a weird kind of mystery, you know. I I, I much prefer getting Pinkie Pie's perspective on that whole thing because I knew that was like a like a debate that happened when the episode came out. Well, I would say that the it works to the episode's advantage because now the conflict and the humor is not from the secret itself, but from how Pinkie Pie is handling that secret. Right. I'd, I I'd do the same thing. I'd crumble into a bunch of limbs at the end of the episode, too. Yep, I, I would agree with that. So my next question is, you have, over the course of your videos, have had a quest to compile everything together. Um, I find that very fascinating that you're trying to keep the show, Quest Your Girls, the comics, and all the books into one massive chronology. What's been the main drive behind that? I, okay, well, for one thing, I am a very very big advocate on absorbing everything that a franchise has to offer so i want to say in like one to two year intervals i i will just throw myself into a fandom completely mm -hmm. and just absorb all the knowledge that i can so because of sheer morbid curiosity and just a little self-hatred i am organizing <laughs> everything i possibly can into this into this giant google doc and just seeing if I can make the most cohesive, best viewing experience for people who are curious, for new bronies or people who just want to watch the show in a, in a new way and have it make a lot more sense. Absolutely. I mean, it's fascinating kind of having that, that large amount and incorporating all the different forms of media into one large package. That's really interesting. It ought to be pretty neat when I'm done. Hopefully, anyways. So my next question for you is, your outro has you playing a ukulele and singing for most of your most of your outros. Uh, how long have you been playing, and how did you get into the ukulele? Uh, ukulele started uh, during quarantine. It's a it's a baritone ukulele specifically, so it's the uh, top four strings of a or the bottom four strings of a guitar. Mm -hmm. During during quarantine, I was put into a class that combined the uh, special ed kids and. Um, and the general ed kids mm -hmm. and uh it, it was called buddy guitars but uh instead of guitars we had ukuleles to mm -hmm. make it uh, more simple the teacher miss picari uh she, she she's a great teacher by the way uh she has um uh, als uh my heart my heart goes out there you know stay safe she um she introduced me to the instrument and uh i was learning guitar at the time mm -hmm. but my guitar classes were closed due, due to quarantine so instead of uh instead of continuing guitar i can i picked up ukulele and just sort of started playing that uh, so my next question for you is, I know we've kind of talked a little bit about this, um, but what has been your thoughts on G5 so far? Because it very, it seems very much to me that the Phantom is incredibly polarized on it so far. Here's the thing. 
G5 is exactly what it needs to be, in my opinion, mm -hmm. which is just My Little Pony, but for for this generation, I should I should say, because mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it I wouldn't call G5 particularly a new generation. It is picking up from G4, but it's like it's it's My Little Pony, but like more YouTube kidsified mm -hmm. and like more pa more pandering to the um to the to the younger audience. But I don't really I don't really mind it. Like. I absolutely hated Make Your Mark, but that's mm -hmm. because of the animation. I love the new generation. I like Tell Your Tale. Uh, the comics so far have been pretty good, in my opinion. And um, all the other supplementary material, like the um, I Can Read kids books, mm -hmm. those, are, those have been very good, too, for what they are. So, so far, I, li I like G5. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. I'll tell you what, G5 has done exactly what it needs to do. It had an amazing start with, new, with a new generation. And then it has completely lowered all of our expectations. So <laughs> that's probably unintentional, but just because our expectations are so so low right now with Tell Your Tale and Make Your Mark, it's it can really only go up from here, in my opinion. Absolutely. Sometimes you need to hit rock bottom to just keep going up. Uh, so my last question for you is, do you want to kind of let people know where they can find you? Oh, yeah. Uh... Well, uh, YouTube is uh, Quantum, Quantum Hippologist. It's not easy to say, not easy to spell, but I have faith in you. And um, Twitter is also the also the same thing at Quantum Hippolog. Uh, I guess I guess I have like a like a, a band camp if you want to, if you want to listen to my uh, my very basic meaty compositions and also one song of me singing. I'll, I'll probably I'll probably post more songs as as the channel grows and I can get more traction to the music side of my my entire shtick. But yeah, uh, Quantum Apologist and Irradiated Radiance. That's where you can find me. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on for this interview. This was an absolute blast to do. Hey, no problem. Thank you for having me. So as always, that's it from me, John. And uh, I'm Quantum Apologist. Goodbye. <laughs> and we will talk to you guys later. Peace out, Dragon. <laughs>